So welcome to our third uh, co-hosted webinar. Uh, so today we are really pleased uh, to show you um, our three apps and show you how you can get JIRA superpowers by reporting on project and calculated field. So just before starting the webinar, if you will, so as you saw, you're already on mute, all of you, but please feel free to ask uh, any of your questions on the chat box, okay? So we will have a Q&A session hosted at the end of uh, the presentation, hosted by Chris, actually, to uh, answer your, your question. If uh, we don't have time to answer your question, do not worry, because we will be uh, answering your question after we're sending you an email. So, um, but please, again, again, feel free to share any feedback or any question. We would really appreciate it. Great. So uh, let me introduce you the speakers of today. So we'll start uh, with myself. Uh, so I'm Flora Rubio. I'm the head of Marketplace Sales at Deza, and I'm also partner manager. So today I will be, um, showing you how to transform JIRA into a productive uh, project reporting tool uh, with Profield. And I will be also with my colleague Fede, uh, who is in charge of the support department and will be answering your question during the Q&A. Uh, then Tom, uh, head of product of All Street, uh, will explain you how to visualize JIRA data simply by putting some data in and getting some really nice, powerful report out. Uh, then Jonathan from uh, C Prime, product manager of C Prime, actually, will show you how PostScript uh, can help product owners and Jira admin to save time, automate task, workflow, and much more. And we'll be also talking about the integration of the three apps. Okay, so I will be talking about the inter uh, integration of Profil with PostScript, and uh, Tom will be talking about um, the integration of custom charts with Profil and PostScript. So you can see exactly how they integrate to, to each other. Obviously, if you've got any question on use case, you can reach us after the, the webinar. And finally, we will have a Q&A uh, hosted by Chris. So again, feel free to ask your, your question. Great, so um, I'm really pleased to uh, be here with you today to talk to you about how uh, our, our profile listed as a staff pick in the marketplace can help you to maximize your project tracking in Jira. So before starting with the demo, I just want to remind you which problem we are trying to solve here, thanks to, to Profield. Well, it is a fact that over the last 10 years, Jira became the most powerful issue tracker product of the market. So as you know, Jira is ideal for any team to get all the relevant information in a unique place. But if you think about it, this added value is always and only from the issue level. Okay, so that's why today we're going to talk about projects. So when we started to wonder how to go further than this issue level to provide some answer from a higher perspective where you could track, classify, and categorize Jira project data, that's how Profil was born, okay? So now you can finally be able to uh, understand what's going on into your Jira in instance and what's going on into your project also. Great, so um, Profield is available for cloud data center and server, but I must say that not all the features I'm gonna show you today are still uh, available on the cloud version yet. Uh, however, our uh, product team is working really hard to make it um, better and better. We are working uh, really um, uh, closely to uh, Atlassian to make it better in terms of security and to offer you a really strong and robust uh, tool. And uh, if I had to sum up what is Profield, I would say that is a, a JIRA project tracker, okay, that helps you to control and manage uh, your JIRA project data. Great, so just before starting, um, a few remind, uh, reminder of uh, the features we have created in the past few years that help our users to improve the project tracking. So the first thing we've got in Profile is the data. Data is key when we talk about Profile, especially because you can create custom properties, but on your project, okay? So then you've got also the alerts. So the same way you will receive notification on your issue change. Well, thanks to Profile, you can be aware of any project change at any time, okay? You can also operate on your, on your project data. So especially thanks to one feature called the bulk operation, which is really appreciated by users, okay? That help them to do massive changes on a large amount of projects. 
you can also audit your information. You can follow up on your information. So you won't miss any relevant information around your project development. Then we've also created different views for the users to display those uh, project data. And uh, we've created the project navigator. So I'm sure you're already familiar with the issue navigator while well, we've created the, the project navigator and different views, the least one and the more recently the releases one. And finally, the reporting. So the, uh, I think we're all going to talk today about reporting, um, which is one of uh, the most important key when we talk about project tracking, at least. And I'm going to show you how um, Profil can offer you through the gadget we've been created uh, some uh, real time reporting. We also integrate with a few other apps, such as EasyBI, uh, to offer you more, more robust and complex um, uh, report. Great, but now let's start with a profile demo. So for this demo, we're gonna pretend we are Ada. And Ada, she's a project uh, lead, okay? So all the gadgets you're gonna see on the screen, they are profits gadgets based on profit data and project data. But we're gonna enter in the project tab and you can see view all project, that would be the project navigator and the different views to display your project data. And we're gonna click on view all project where you can see how Profil can improve the user experience uh, with the project navigation. So here, for example, you can see all the custom fields that you would have previously created. So there is different uh, type of custom field. You can also look for advanced search or basic search. So the advanced search would be the PQL. But let's say now we want to focus on ADA's project. So we're going to click on ADA as a project lead. And we're going to say, that we want only in uh, the programming language filter, we're going to select Java's project. Okay, so this is uh, the portfolio of ADA of Java's project. Great, so here we can add more uh, custom properties. We can add programming language, we can add um, um, project status, um, project priority also. So that would be the custom properties we would have created thanks to Profil. Okay, so here we're going to clean a bit to make it better. And here it is. So here you can see different information and that includes native and custom field, okay? So another great feature is that we can save the filter. So you're, you can put a name like my Java project. So you will be able uh, to look back at it in, in the future, great. So once you've got this, we can also go into the my filter section and manage your filter great so you can see all the the past filter you have created uh, when was the last time someone looked at it if they're shareable or not any kind of information you can find uh, around filter the same way you can uh, get in uh, in jira great so once we are done with uh, the the list view I would like to show you another uh, way of looking at your, your project, okay? So um, the other way will be the releases view, which is basically a timeline of all your project version, okay, in one place. So basically you can put and select the date that you want. So there is like a time frame here. So you can select any date that you want. Perfect. And then you can select one specific project and see if you expand, you see more version and if you put your mouse here, you can see like a pop-up window. Great. So from, directly from here, you can change the information, but you can also see the progress of your release. Okay. But let's say we want to change the release date. Then you click on apply and here it is. So that's a great asset for any release manager. You can also see like this one is on unreleased. Okay. So you can change and update the date. Great. Um, another great feature on this screen will be um, the, the ability to look for your version uh, following on your, on, on your version, on your status, sorry. So you can click on unreleased, released, etc. So again, this feature is great for any, uh, any release manager or any marketing team that would like to know about the, the next release. Great, so once we are done uh, with that, I would like to focus on the notification part. So to do so, we're gonna create a new subscription and we're gonna name it a weekly subscription. Great, so let's name it weekly subscription so we will receive some notification. Then 
we can set up a day and a time. So make every Monday at 8 a.m., for example, and you can choose options. So in that case, we will uh, choose to highlight only updated value from the last email, okay? You can click on schedule. And if you see, uh, if you click on see subscription, you will manage your subscription the same way you can do with uh, your filter. Great. But now let's go back to the search. You remember the Java product search? Then here are the, the 17 project. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bulk operation. So here you can see a list of options. So massive change that you can do on your project portfolio. So you can change a project field, you can delete project, you can assign new role, leads, layout, category, or component. In that case, let's say I want to change the statue of my project. So we go to the project status. And I will update them so you can see they are on ready and I will put them on ongoing. Great. So you just need to make sure you, you want to change the statue. And here you are, you uh, just updated 17 projects. So if you expand and you will see the entire list of projects that have been updated. Great. So that was the, the bulk operation. But now let's go back to the notification. Remember, you've created a, a, a new subscription. Well, here is the email you will receive uh, on Monday, okay, on, on Monday at 8 a.m. as you, you've, um, you've asked for. So you will see the updated uh, value, you will see who has made the change, et cetera. So it, this is one of the way of receiving notification. So one of the way of following up on information, especially if you are managing a lot of uh, project and, and team. Great, so I would like to focus uh, now on the bulk operation, okay, feature, which is one of the most used and loved by, by users because it helps them to reduce manual tasks. So uh, again, all the, the, the option uh, available, but this time, let's say I want to add new developer across my portfolio. So I will click on roll. I will add some users and I will say that I want Alvaro um, I will add um, Carlos, Diana, and I could add David, for example. So those four guys will be now new developers across your portfolio. So that's perfect, especially if you have a high turnover on uh, in your company. Great. So uh, again, you can see the list of updated projects here. So I'm done with bulk operation. I would like to talk now about another feature based on issue because we know how Jira users love issues. So uh, this is basically a way of um, seeing um, the, the issue depending on the, on the prof profile uh, search you've done. So if you click here, you will get a direct access to the issue navigator, okay? With the query you have done in, in profile. So uh, you can see here that there is different uh, project key because a lot of projects are involved with this specific search. And what we've done um, here is basically creating um, a new function within the, the GQL that allow you to uh, search for issue depending on profile uh, and project data. Great, so now one of the last feature I want to show you is the layout, which is really important. It's like a JIRA schema, okay? So what I'm gonna show you now is all the information you can put around your project. So those are custom field or native field, okay? And you can change the information directly from this screen. So let's say I want to add Guillermo uh, in the finance department. I'm gonna uh, set up uh, some real high business goal, uh, market expansion at least. And I'm gonna put um, the Kanban board uh, usage uh, type. Okay, great. So we'll go back to those changes later. But what is important to understand is directly from here, you can change your project data, but you can also follow up on your project data. So look, thanks to the history feature, you can see exactly what happened in the past that, for example, Laura, she changed the status. Um, so you can see the updated value, you can see the, the, the day uh, the, the change was made. So you don't have to ask to uh, all your member team what happened. So if I decide to watch project, so remember we have the new subscription to receive notification. Well, watch project would be another way of receiving notification. So because I've decided to watch project, I will receive this uh, email with all the updated value. So I can uh, edit um, the notification so I'm, I don't receive uh, uh, as soon as there is a change. And uh, I'm sure like um, I've got all the information that are really useful for me as a, 
a project lead. Great, so uh, before um, finishing with the demo, I just want to focus now on the reporting part. So as I told you, we've added some gadget on the existing dashboard of JIRA. And those gadget being uh, obviously based on profile data. Okay, so let me uh, show you how to add a new gadget. So you can see all of uh, those gadgets are profiles gadget, but uh, let's go on the search bar and put a uh, profile. So you will see all our gadgets. And you can click on this one, for example, on the pie chart one. So it's really easy to add uh, a new gadget, actually. So first you can choose any existing field uh, filter, sorry. So we will uh, pick the uh, Java project. And, and let's say we want to see my Java project per, per, by priority. So that would be the name of my gadget. And then I would say that the field um, that I want to focus on, on is the project priority. I can sort my result also. And then I can also change the color if I want to, if I want to custom them to get my own graphic chart, well, I can, I can do it also. Well, now we can click on save. And here it is. So this is a real time breakdown of your uh, Java project by, by priority. So you can see they are um, actionable. Uh, so you can see the result per percentage. You can also export your gadgets. And if you click here, you can see all the issue related to this uh, result. So um, I'm pretty done now with, uh, with Profile. So as I told you, uh, Profile is already integrated with a few apps of the marketplace. Um, so we already connect with Easy BI, uh, with Element Connect and much more. And talking about integration, I would like to talk now about the integration with uh, PowerScript. Okay, so I'm sure that Jonathan is gonna explain you later much better than I will do. Uh, I just want to explain you really briefly how you can use both of our tools. So the example I will, uh, I will take is uh, based on one condition, one specific condition, the seal condition. Okay, as poor script uh, helps you to get script based on condition, on function, on field, etc. So what we've done for this integration is we are using uh, one of the features that offer for field that you can see on the screen, which is uh, the ability to map fields. Okay, so what we've done is we mapped one pro field in Jira and we used this field in one script. Okay, so one custom field is, is used in, in the script uh, of uh, Power Script. Great. So this script is used to condition a workflow. Okay, so in the example I'm going to show you, uh, how you can put a condition in a workflow that cannot be executed if a project doesn't have status, for example, okay? The project statue being the project field uh, created by, by Profield. Great. So uh, first, what I'm gonna do is pick any workflow of my project and we can pick this transition, start progress. Then we can add some condition. So here you can see all the past conditions that have been created. And if you click on add condition, we will find the seal condition that we would have previously created. Great, but now let's edit one of them and see how it works. So we're gonna see the script. And so you can see on the script that the custom field is used. So the custom field here being the project status here, perfect. So if the custom field is on track, then it's true. And either, uh, and if the project, uh, project field is not on track, is off track, that would be false. Great, so now we click on next, finish, and we can publish this uh, workflow. Great. So now I'm gonna show you how it works. Um, so let's enter into an issue. Uh, so you can see that the project statue is off track so uh, that you cannot put uh, the start progress uh, status. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter in profile again and we're gonna change the statue and we're gonna put it on track. And here it is, you can see the start progress status. So obviously there is uh, plenty of uh, use case 
uh, I, I just show you uh, one really short. Again, if you need any um, advice or any example, please feel free to, to contact us. So I'm done uh, with my part. I will now let uh, Tom uh, tell you a bit more about Custom Shot and the integration of his app with App for Field and PowerScript. Thank you, guys. All yours, Tom. Thank you very much. OK. Hello, everyone. Thanks for that, Flora. That was, yeah, really interesting to see. So uh, my presentation is going to be kind of a, a sandwich between the two. It's going to show you a lot about um, our apps, custom charts for Jira and Confluence, show you um, how you can create really nice reports. And then it's going to lead on to how you can actually use the, these other add-ons to generate reports as well. OK, so I'm going to start sharing my screen now. And let's get to it. OK, so hopefully you can all see my screen there. What we're looking at now. So hopefully this will look very familiar to you. This is um, this is not a report made on Windows 95. This isn't a report from 2001. This is actually what you get right now on Jira Cloud in 2020, which is great if, if you, you're going for the retro look. But if you're proud of the work that you do, you probably want your reports to look a little bit nicer. If you spent more than five minutes actually doing work in Jira, then the reports should look a bit better. So this is what you get with Jira and the equivalent reports with custom charts for Jira. So the key point here is that the reports look nicer. And that's actually quite important. It's important that the tools, um, the reports that you generate for your teams look nice and the reports are easy to understand and consistent. Now, consistency is key, and we'll be talking about that a lot more as we go through. Um, but just to, just to clarify, that it is nice and easy to, to, to look at, easy to use, dynamic, and um, yeah, quite fun. So. Let's jump in. So what I'm going to be doing now is using the interactive app playground. And this is available to everyone. This is just on the Old Street website. So you don't need to install the app to play with it. You can just go straight to this link um, and you'll be able to use the add-on without even installing it. Now, the next question that's going to come up is, where is this app available? And the answer is everywhere. So every single thing I'm showing you, every feature is available on every platform. It is identical on cloud server and data center, on Jira and Confluence. So there's two standalone apps, Jira and Confluence. Um, you can have one or the other. They both connect to Jira and pull data through. So here's an example dashboard that I've created on the playground. So you can see the various chart types that are available and how they work together. So you can see here you've got these dynamic um, line charts. You've got your pie chart where you can click through and drill down straight into the data sets. OK. Finally, just before we jump into the editor, this is all about how the reports look nice and are nice to have on a dashboard. But what if you want more than one dashboard? And this is quite common. You maybe have a few teams and you want a consistent place for them to, to view their data. So what you've got here is a simple search gadget. And what this allows you to do is connect multiple charts to the same gadget and use this to drill down into your data. So what we're going to do is this is a very British dashboard that's been created. It's about making tea and biscuits. So we're going to search for tea here. And you can see all of these charts are connected to this searcher. And they've dynamically updated. So I can actually see, OK, well, there's two story points that relate to the, the, the text T. And they're both in rag status green. Brilliant. Really helpful. I can see what status they're in. I can see what sprint they're in and who the assignee is. And I can also see when their due date is. And this is all dynamic based on this single search here. You can select multiple fields and actually just type in JQA yourself. So this is the functionality of, of why you'd want custom charts. But that's great. It's not necessarily groundbreaking. It's not too different to, to maybe what you've seen before from other apps like EasyBI. Um, it just looks a bit nicer. OK, so let's get into why you'd actually want it, the editor. So the power of custom charts comes in who it's for. So a lot of the other add-on, uh, a lot of the other data visualization tools that you may have seen in the past, they're for the few, not the many. They're for the, the super admins that can use JavaScript and learn different coding languages on the weekend just so you can get that nice report. That's not very helpful if they're going to become a blocker, if they're going to become the only person in the company of 10,000 people that can actually change a dashboard. So what we've done is said, that's great. You still need those big data solutions. You still need those power users. But what if there was a tool that everybody else could use, a tool that was for the 99%, the everybody else, where you weren't terrified about having to make a report or exporting everything to Excel and hoping you remember how to do it? 
What if there was a way you could just build a report that you want in a few seconds with everything you need directly inside of JIRA? OK, so that's what custom charts is. Here we go. So every time you load up a chart, you'll be shown this splash screen, which just gives you a quick tutorial on how to use the app. And I'm going to go through this in, in real time. So you, you don't need the tutorial now, but just to let you know that every time you land on it, you'll have this instruction set. OK, so what is custom charts? Well, it's a set of different chart types initially that you can just switch between. So you've got uh, a bunch of options for displaying your charts that you can select like this. OK, nothing special, nothing too special so far, but let's, let, let's build on that. What you normally get with a chart, if we go to a bar chart, this is what you normally see. Your chart, which is just um, a set of issues, maybe in, in size order. Well, what if we don't want it in size order? What if we actually want to make this a bit more useful to us? What if we want it in process order? Well, I'd quite like backlog to be at the start, but I really want done to be at the bottom. So I'm just going to drag it down to the bottom. In review and in progress, you see in review is not showing up because I've actually hidden it. I didn't want to see an empty column, so it will just hide them when there's no data. And that's done with a single button. But what if there's other things I don't want to see at all? For example, blocked. Well, I never want to see blocked on this chart. It's not actually useful for what I'm trying to display right now. So I'm just going to click hide. And now blocked will never show up. OK, that's really helpful. So here we've got um, in progress and in review. Now, I actually want these to be combined together. I don't need them to be separate. So what I'm going to do is, without having to do any custom coding or configuring or changing any custom fields, I'm just going to click Add Option. And I'm going to type in In. And you can see here, In Review has come up. It's a status that exists in a different field. If I click on it, you can see there it jumped in. So it deleted the other segment and pulled it together. So now it's a single combined option here, In Progress and In Review. We don't want it to be called that on the chart. So what we're going to instead do is just click Edit Name. And we're going to call this Work in Progress WIP. OK, there you go. So now in a few seconds, or just under a minute, we've created a chart where you've got your process flow, backlog, work in progress, closed, and done resolved in this case. And you get a nice visualization. A step further, what if we want two-dimensional data? So we're going to go to a stacked bar chart. And now we're going to say, well, actually, show me that bar broken down by assignee. OK, so now we can actually see um, who has created or who has completed issues at various steps along the way. So you can see Nick Fury in this case has got issues all the way along. And this kind of is a different way, for example, if this was a sprint to visualize that data. But it's just issue count. And if you've ever used any of the uh, tools uh, built in charts inside of Jira, you'll know that issue count isn't that useful because there's lots of other metrics you can use. Uh, there's actually lots of number fields you could use, not just the ones available. So here we go. If you click on count, we've got a few options. We've got issues, projects, which I'll show you in a minute, which is the uh, pro fields integration story points, some time options here, and also scripted number fields, which is where we'll look at power scripts as well. So we're going to start with story points because that's the most interesting. OK, well, here we go. So this is actually not a burn down chart, but I think it actually can be more useful and can work in parallel with the built in burn down reports that you get with Jira. So if the source you chose for here from this save filter, for example, was the current sprint, um, you could also um, select advanced JQL and type it in directly, or the simple search gadget. That's where you select that. So here we go. We've got story points. And now that actually shows us that Nick Fury is actually doing a very different job. And it's actually Van Helsing that's potentially the problem here. Because even though the overall number of story points in the sprint we can see that have been closed and done resolved, we can see that actually lots are still in the backlog. And nearly all of them are with a one single user, one single assignee. So really important over, overview um, created with a really simple chart. And the important thing about this is that anyone could edit this or could um, have the knowledge to edit this. So we don't worry about the, the student that you got to make a chart one time leaving the company and no one can ever touch the report again. Anyone, if they become the owner of the dashboard, it still respects Jira permissions. Anyone should be able to jump into this and change things. One final piece, um, the color. So this was the actual reason we started building custom charts was the frustration if anyone's um, used the built-in reports of not being able to change the color or have consistent pie charts. It seems like a small thing, but people get asked it a lot. So let me just say that, yeah, with the pie chart, if I want to change this color, I can just click here and you can just change it. And that's nice and consistent. It'll always be the same color. And you can also change, you know, really dynamic if you want some nice vibrant colors. There you go. 
Okay, so uh, interesting question about Jira Service Desk tickets that's come up. So I'll just mention that. Um, yes, it works really well with Jira Service Desk. So what I'm going to do now is show you my production dashboard that I use on cloud. So this is the Old Street support dashboard that I look at every single day. And what you can see here is that I'm looking at my created tickets in various statuses, done, in progress, and to do. Um, I've got all my different tickets. I know that to look for triage, that's some important things, but let's look at service desk specific. So here we've got request type, and that's actually just available request channel type as well. And it works with, um, let me just show you here, customer request type, request channel type, request participants. It works really well with organizations, which is super useful if you want to group, for example, organizations together. So if you wanted to create something, in this case, Acme and InGen, you could actually call it, rename this to um, uh, to USA, for example. And now you've actually got a, cat a, a group of organizations without having to touch any Jira service desk configuration. You've actually grouped a bunch of organizations together. So it works really well, super compatible with Jira service desk. And again, just to reiterate, every single feature you're seeing is on cloud server and data center identical. If you see the feature, it's available for you. There is no feature difference between server and cloud and they migrate, uh, we're working on the migration between the two as well with Atlassian, um, but they are identical apps, not a single button or um, icon will be different. Every feature is available everywhere. Okay, great. So uh, just a few more things, just to, just before I jump into the, the integrations with the other apps. Uh, so custom charts also has some nice date fields. So you can see here, um, simple date ranges. Um, this is a fixed date I've done from January to April. And you can see, um, you can choose months or weeks, and you've got various options. If you don't want to see the rainbow, which again is another another call, you can just turn it off by doing that and selecting a color lock. And then you can just pick one color for all your bars. Again, really helpful. Um, you've got a bunch of uh, display options here. Nothing too special. I'd recommend playing around with these and seeing what you can do. Um, what I would say is you can copy charts really easily between dashboards by using this copy, clip, copy, import, export feature. So if we jump to a different chart, maybe on a different dashboard, and we paste it in here, as soon as we click import, the entire chart reloads with exactly the same configuration we just had, everything the same, which is helpful if you don't want to copy the whole dashboard. Okay, and then finally, because I don't want to use up all the time, is um, custom JQL. So right now, if you're thinking, well, actually, you support lots and lots of fields on here, the service desk fields, lots of date fields, um, a lot of custom fields from various third party vendors. But what if I want something more? Well, the answer then, and the answer very often is custom JQL or saved filters. And what that means is, as you can see here, you can actually have a fully customized JQL searcher. And I'm gonna just type it in here, project equals support. And there you go. So I'm gonna call this sup. Not a very helpful example, but what it does show you is that anything you can write a query for, any JQL using any add-on um, will be supported. And you'll be able to display literally anything you can write a query for without learning a new custom language. It just uses JQL. You can also use save filters if you have those saved. You can see here, and it'll just pick those up. And you can create charts directly. OK, so hopefully that covers um, a lot of features. I'll be able to answer questions at the end if you have any specific ones. Um, what I want to talk about now is the integrations. So as I said, um, right now we've got um, the different count options available. So um, one thing that we're going to, with Profields, is all about project data. So all the power of custom charts you've just seen, what if you want to count more than issues? What if you want to count projects? And this is where Profields and their data um, comes together. So we're going to do projects here. And this is just um, a simple example showing you that we change from issues to projects. And now you actually see that underneath here, there are three projects in that issue count. And you can display that in any way you want using everything I've just shown you. I want to show you a slightly better example because mine doesn't do it justice. So here you go. This is a project status, which is a pro fields, a pro fields field that has been added to a bunch of issues. And OK, we can see that there's 263 issues that are ongoing, but that doesn't really tell us much about the project. So by changing issues in the editor to projects, OK, well, there we go. Now we can actually see it's 85 projects that are ready and only 19 are ongoing. And that was just the issue count previously. So a much more useful metric here to see what projects um, 
what the state of different projects are and it works and is compatible with uh, every pro fields field that's available. So really nice integration there. Um, and if you do have any questions or ideas or thoughts on this, get definitely get in touch with either of the teams, we'll be able to help. Okay, but again, I hear you saying, I want a bit more, I want more power. Um, all this simple functionality is fine, but what if I need something else? So um, scripted fields. So this, if we jump to a scripted field here, um, this is using um, uh, power fields integrations. This is a power fields script. And a simple example I've got here is just int count equals two. Now you can write any script for any calculation. Um, and what it will do is display on the issue. So if I just click on this scripted number field here, you'll see that it's just a number two on the issue and the chart will be an aggregation. It will just add them all up. Okay, if you want a bit more um, complication, you can do things like um, return the total number of story points in an epic. So you can actually have the epic level and calculate all the story points below it. And this would be a field that was on the epic. And then you could chart by epic name and actually see epic name by story points, total story points, if that was the field you'd created. And you'd be able to display that data on a, on a chart. Okay, that covers most integration. I don't want to take up all the time because I know there's quite a lot to cover with uh, PowerScripts itself. So um, let me just jump back over here and say, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Let me know if you've got any questions at the end. Okay, Flora, back over to you. Well, I think now it's time for Jonathan to um, talk about his app. So I don't know, Jonathan, if you can share your screen and it's all yours. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about uh, the Power Suite. Um, you've heard two of the apps in the Power Suite talked about today, uh, Power Scripts and Power Custom Fields. Um, my name is Jonathan Muse. I'm a product manager with C Prime. Uh, we're one of the largest Atlassian solutions partners in, in the Americas. Uh, and we uh, created the, the, the power suite of apps. And the uh, we call it a suite because all the apps work together based on a common framework. And that framework is the uh, SIL language or SIL language, which stands for simple issue language. And you've seen some examples of that already. And all the apps work together seamlessly using this language. And with this language, you can read and write data to tickets, as you've already seen. You can create, modify, or delete issues in JIRA. You can modify the screens um, and, and custom tailor them to each individual user. You can run scripts intermittently or on a schedule. You can run scripts from an external service uh, or remote system, uh, or you can run them when any event is triggered inside of JIRA. And there are actually many, many other ways that you can trigger the, the scripts. The beautiful part about the simple issue language is how simple it is. Uh, it, it lowers the barrier of entry into uh, really complex automation because no programming experience is needed because it's not a true programming language uh, like Groovy, which can be uh, much harder to learn. It's a much simpler language, uh, similar to, to jQuery or, or, or JavaScript. Uh, and the language isn't affected by JIRA updates. Uh, when you write in Groovy, you are actually writing against a specific version of the API. And when that API updates, you may need to update your scripts as well. In three or four lines of SIL code, uh, you can write the equivalent of actually 30 or 40 lines of Groovy. And that can be done because we can control the language and make it simple. And you stay within the context of JIRA and you don't need to think in the context of the, the programming language. And all this makes it much faster uh, to write and faster to deploy. And it makes you more comfortable 
with the solution. And this is an illustration of what I was talking about, how uh, the scripts don't break between versions because we take all those classes, dependencies, and packages that you actually have to include inside your, your Groovy script. Uh, and we put them down into the add-on, leaving the, uh, the language uh, free of, of all that. So when you want to upgrade, all you need to do is upgrade the version of the app and all those dependencies will get corrected even if they were once broken. So why is it called simple? Uh, this is an example of a Groovy script. You can see the first nine lines are, are these imports. And you would need to know not just the Groovy language, but you would need to know the Atlassian API in order to write this. And you would need to know exactly which of these, these nine imports that you would need in order to write your code. And the way typically people solve this is by Googling and, and going on to the Atlassian community questions to find the answer. They find an example of something somebody's already done and they modify it because they're not comfortable writing it themselves from scratch. So here's an equivalent line in, in SIL and you can see it's just one line and it does the exact same thing as the previous script. So what does PowerScripts actually do? Well, PowerScripts is actually, uh, the triggers inside Jira that lets you run the SIL language. So there's many ways to do that, as you've seen, uh, using workflows, uh, conditions and validators, services such as running at a specific time interval or on a specific schedule, listeners. So these would be run uh, when an issue is updated or a new user is created or a project's created. It, triggers the scripts on events that aren't related to the workflow. And live fields, this is our feature for modifying the behavior of the, the forms on the screen. And scripted gadgets allow you to create custom user interfaces to run these scripts in a nine hoc basis, creating uh, reusable scripts, sort of your, your script toolbox. REST service allows you to integrate with external systems and it allows the external systems to integrate with Jira so you can do real, uh, real time two way integration. And simplify your process, simplify the, the maintenance of, of Jira by eliminating a lot of, a lot of the apps required. Many of the apps in the Elastian Marketplace do just one simple thing. Think of a, a create on transition, for example. Uh, it, it does one thing and it's pretty easy to replace with uh, automation. And, and this comprises, like I said, 50% of the add-ons in the marketplace. So th with the power suite, you can actually, in essence, create your own add-ons. So, Reap the benefits, uh, you know, implement faster solutions, uh, make sure your solution is, is portable and it's not gonna break. Uh, make sure you uh, invest in a solution that's gonna be easy to use and that you can use repeatedly without seeking external resources. And make sure you're, you're investing in an extensible ecosystem where you can grow and advance your, your integrations. So now I'm going to jump into uh, the demo. And I want to actually show you a little bit of use with the, uh, the language and talk about how this can be used for managing your projects. So this is a, an issue. Um, I think it's just a story. Uh, in Jira, and this is what's known as the SIL manager. And this is where you would write your SIL code and you can run it in order to test it. You can see output in the console, you can see error messages in the system logs, and you actually need an add-on to do that in, in most cases, but the log viewer brings those logs uh, to the surface so you can identify any problems. And what I'm gonna do is actually run 
this script and show you that it's getting the script for this issue. It knows what the key is because I pulled it in this run configuration. But when you run this script in a workflow, in a condition validator, a post function, in a listener, or most every other way that the script is triggered, it already knows what the key is. And the language is so easy to use, you just say summary, for example, if you want to see the summary of the issue. And now you can see the summary of the issue is, is created here. It already knows what the summary is. It knows who is actually calling the script. So there's my username right there. So it makes it very easy to add some of the, the control and the governance like you were seeing before with the scripted conditions because you know who the user is. Now all you need to do is check to see, are they in a certain uh, project role? Are they in a certain user group? Do they have permission to perform this action? Uh, and the possibilities of, of things you can check about that user and uh, information about the, the, the ticket, such as the current status, if certain fields are filled in, it's all super simple because we've simplified the language greatly, as you can see. Now, it's not just the ability to read this information, but you can also write it the exact same way. So now you're not gonna see anything happen down here because I didn't tell it to do anything down here. But if I come back into this issue and I refresh, you can see that the summary is now updated. Uh, and it doesn't get any easier than that. And it is a very non-intimidating language. Now, some of the things you can do with this beyond uh, conditions and validators, which are uh, extremely valuable, you can make sure your data gets propagated. So for example, if you put this script in a post function, and you wanted uh, the value, the data from an epic or uh, a parent, all you would need to do uh, is grab that information from the parent and copy it down to the, uh, the post function. So there's just a, a question of uh, whether or not you can add to the summary. And the answer is yes. So let me just do that and I'll show you something else. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna look good. But there is it's added to. And there's all sorts of functions such as finding and replacing text, uh, you know, trimming the length, uh, you know, concatenating text together. Uh, it has the power of a language without being overly complicated. And while we're on that subject, here's an example of what we call a routine. Uh, this is a function, and underneath this function is essentially the same Groovy code that you saw uh, previously. Uh, but there might be 100 lines of Groovy for this one line of code to add a comment. And it's as simple as this, this one line of code. Uh, you put the issue key that you want to add the comment to, the, the username, and the comment you want to add. So question just came in also, if you can add REST endpoints with this language. And the answer is, is yes. Uh, you can create incoming REST endpoints uh, as simple as, as pointing to the script and picking your method and giving it a name. So this is uh, one of the ways you create that real-time two-way integration. And you can see we've simplified more than just the language itself, but we've also simplified the process uh, of setting it up. All right. 
So some of the other ways you can use this functionality to uh, improve your reporting on project is to make sure the data is valid. So here's an example using Jira Service Desk. You'll notice that I only have address one and phone one. And if I go to enter the information, if it's in the incorrect format, uh, you'll notice that error message pop up. And you'll also notice that I can no longer submit the request. But when I finish typing, now phone two pops up and this phone one type. So the same thing can happen here. And now phone two has appeared and notice that home is no longer available because we've selected it in phone one. We have that information, so we don't need to ask for it again. So this can improve the overall user experience. It's less intimidating to look at uh, by the end user and it kind of guides them through the process and it makes sure, make sure you're getting the data that you want in the format you want and that will improve the validity of your data and therefore um, your reporting ability of the data. You can also use a similar behavior to implement custom security. So you'll notice on the screen, I can no longer modify assignee and reporter. Uh, I've added this, this little message to myself, uh, changed the color of some items up here, but I've also removed tabs down here. It's very easy, one line of code, again, to add security on top of these, these fields so that some users, maybe based on a group, uh, maybe based on a project role, can no longer see that. So maybe project managers can see budget fields uh, and other Others cannot. All right. uh, another question is if PowerScripts can get data from an external database. And the answer to that is, is yes, absolutely. Uh, it is a very powerful integration platform, uh, as, as we've seen. Uh, you can connect data to your data source, or uh, you can connect Jira to your databases and pull that data in and add those to your, your beautiful charts that we saw from Old Street, add that information as, as options for the pro fields and you know, use the data that you have despite the fact that it may be living uh, in another system. All right, I could talk about this for another hour, uh, but at this point, uh, I want to make sure we have enough time for everybody's questions on, on all subjects. So I won't monopolize you, the, rest of the time. So I think now it's uh, Chris' uh, time. So all yours, Chris. That's my cue. Thank you very much, everyone. So we've had some good questions. Some have been answered along the way. Uh, but just to make sure we cover all the good ones. Um, just to clarify, um, please tell me if I'm wrong, Fede uh, and Jonathan, but a few people were asking about the feature parity between cloud server and data center. Um, I believe that there'll be features on all three platforms, if not now, then soon. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, with profiles, we have the the thing is that uh, we have uh, the server uh, instance and data center. There are two different experiences uh, between server and data center and the cloud instances. Right now, cloud is a little bit behind uh, on features, but we're working. Uh, we have been working throughout this whole year in order to uh, manage and bring that up to par. You know, so uh, I believe that, and I hope that by the end of the year, beginning of next year, you will see that what we have done and we, what we have created with Profiles Cloud. So that's pretty much it. Two different, uh, different experiences right now. If not yet, then soon. Super. Exactly. A few people had some questions about the security of, of Profiles. Um, they were curious about that and also where you store your data, which I suppose is a related question. 
Yes, well, uh, that's that's the that is a really good question because uh, well, profiles, all the data that you enter in profiles is going to be saved in the Jira database. Profiles, my, when you install profiles, profiles creates a data, a, 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 some database tables that uh, are needed in order to store that data. So as long as your Jira instance is secure with the database, your information in, pro, in profiles is going to be secure. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very that's, much. Yeah, that would be peace of mind for a lot of people. Obviously, some of our enterprise customers, are, security you. is of utmost importance. So good utmost. to hear. Thank you. Um, some people are interested in uh, whether all of these add-ons work with custom fields. And, and I think the quick answer is yes, right? Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all three of the apps we've just seen uh, work very well with custom fields. Yes, they yes. Very Brilliant. Well. <laughs> so, so please, uh, yeah, feel free to play around and check out. Um, the The most important question, I think, is is where should someone go if they want to find out more, uh, see more about these these add-ons. So, well, uh, I've seen that. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, sorry, uh, I've seen that someone asked, uh, "Where do I get the profiles feature?" Uh, you can go to the Atlassian Marketplace and just search for profiles, and you will get uh, the the profiles. Uh, how do you say landing page? Where you get uh, you will get all the features listed, you know, and everything that you need to know about profiles before installing. Remember that there's always a uh, there's always a three-day trial period, so whenever you install it, and if if uh, you have questions, remember that you can always ask us uh, through our service desk portal. You know, that's for us. Uh, I don't know if you, Tom, have something uh, to say about. Yeah, definitely. The, the the first point of contact will be the, the marketplace. We have a, a list of useful links at the bottom that link to our public feature roadmap, all our support, documentation, everything. So the, the single source of truth definitely is the Atlassian marketplace listing. If just Google custom charts for Jira, it's the first thing you'll find and just, just go from there. Uh, and finally, someone asked if Profields works with EasyBI. I happen to know it does, uh, as well as custom charts, as well as the great apps we've seen from C Prime these days. So um, if you uh, can't find it in the documentation, reach out to support. I happen to know all three of these companies are very, very active on support. We are out of time, uh, but as I say, with uh, these great support teams, uh, if you have any questions, the details you'll get following this with an email, if you send it, we will be happy to reply. We'll be happy to give personal demos uh, and, and answer any deeper questions you have moving forwards. Well said. Thank you so much, all the presenters and all the speakers. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Flora, for yeah. organizing this and herding all the cats. You did a brilliant job. <laughs> um, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you to all the attendees. Thank you so much for your time as well. It's been lovely. Thank you and see you all to our next uh, co-hosting webinar. And thank you very much, Chris, and, and the rest of the team. Bye-bye, guys. Ciao. Absolute pleasure. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.